If someone told you to make a wish and it would come true, I wonder, what would you wish? Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. This is the month when we celebrate Father's Day and so I thought I would share a story with you about a father and his daughter. And this father ends up making a rather unusual wish. This story is an ancient Greek myth. Do you know what kind of story a myth is? Yes, that's right. It's a story from long, long, long ago times, which many people believe to be true, but no one can actually prove it. So in this myth, the king wishes for gold, but he makes this wish in a very unusual way, as you will hear. The ancient Greeks worshipped many different gods, and so you're going to hear the name Salinus in this story, who was a woodland god believed of horses' ears and a tail, and Dionysus is the god of wine and winemaking. Quick thank you to Sadina Crow, a lovely mum who reached out to me wanting to know how she could send some pictures that her child drew. And a big thanks to a little girl called Marianne, who drew a beautiful picture from her favourite episode of Journey with Story, The Little Snow Girl. Remember, you can send me your pictures at any time on Instagram at Journey with Story. And mums and dads, if you're enjoying this ad-free podcast, it would really help us if you take a moment to share it with others and rate and review it. Thank you ever so much. Let's take a journey with King Midas and the Golden Touch. Long, long ago in ancient Greece, there lived a king named Midas, who had a daughter, Marigold, whom he loved with all his heart. But Midas also loved something else too. Gold. Day after day, for hours and hours at a time, Midas hid himself away in his treasure rooms, counting all his piles of gold. Father, Marigold would say, Come outside with me and see the flowers blooming. No, no, child, not now. I'm too busy. Here, sweet girl, come. Look, wear this golden necklace. See how it shimmers and shines. But Marigold did not care for jewels or gold. She loved walking barefoot in her simple clothes over grassy fields. She loved the feel of the wind in her hair and the velvety softness of rose petals, the trill of bird songs, the pale pink in the sky at dusk and dawn, and the scent of wood smoke and lilacs. She often walked alone, wishing that her father would join her and learn to love the world as she did. One day, as Midas sat in his treasure room counting his gold, a man appeared before him. He did not look like any ordinary man. He wore a leopard skin around his broad bronze shoulders and vines were twined around his head. Who are you? Midas asked. I am Dionysus, god of wine and pleasure, the stranger said. I have come to thank you for being kind to my old teacher Silenus. The gods do not forget such kindness. I have come to grant you any wish you make. Ah, yes, Midas said, for he remembered an old man who had appeared one night at the palace gates, and Midas had given him food and shelter, and the old man had thanked him and promised him that he would be rewarded. So now this god had come to give thanks. Midas was thrilled. Please be seated, Midas said, and look at my beautiful coins. Dionysus smiled weakly. I prefer the way grapes glow when the sun shines down on them. Midas laughed. Ha! Grapes look best served on a golden platter, he said. My only wish is for gold. I wish all that I touched would turn to gold. Do you see what I mean about him making this wish for gold in a very unusual way? I wonder why he didn't just ask for more gold. Keep listening, boys and girls, and think about that. Your wish is granted, Dionysus said with a frown on his face, and he disappeared as quickly as he'd appeared. 
Just then Midas heard the bell calling him to eat. He turned to leave the room, but as he touched the door, he gasped, for it had turned to gold. He touched his robe, and it too turned to gold. He looked down, and he saw that his leather sandals were pure gold. He walked through the hallways, touching everything he passed. The columns turned to gold as did the floor beneath his feet, and by the time he reached the table, he was brimming with excitement. Marigold! He cried, I am the happiest man in the world. But father, Marigold said, your robe is stiff. Solid gold, Midas cried. The gods have granted me the golden touch. Look at your chair, father, Marigold cried. Sure enough, it was gold, and his napkin turned to gold with his touch. We are the luckiest people in all the world, he said, reaching for a piece of bread. But to his horror, the bread had turned to gold. Oh, no, he cried. This was terrible indeed. He could not eat anything, for everything he touched turned to gold. Staring down at his golden plate, he wondered what to do. Oh, father, you will starve. Marigold cried, and she ran to his side to comfort him. No, no, Midas shouted, but before he could stop her, Marigold had thrown her arms around her beloved father, and now his precious daughter was hard and cold, a golden statue, no longer a child. Oh, Dionysus! Midas cried, take this dreadful gift away, I want my child. But Dionysus was far away by then. He did not hear the king's cry. All that night, the poor king wept, holding his daughter in his arms and wishing he could undo what he had done. I will never be greedy again, he called to the gods. Please send me Dionysus, I will be different from now on. At dawn, Dionysus appeared. Do you still love gold so much? He asked the king. No, take away my golden touch and give me back my child. Go to the river, Dionysus said. Bathe yourself and you will be cured. Midas ran like lightning to the river and dived into the water and as he did, small golden pellets floated past. But Midas no longer cared for these. He scrubbed and prayed to the gods... And before long, his clothing became soft and white again, and his sandals turned to soft leather. He ran back to the palace, and he clasped his daughter to him. A moment later, she began to grow soft and warm. <gasps> Father, she said as her lips began to move. Father, I dreamed I could not speak or move. I dreamed that all the world was gold. Midas held her close. A terrible dream, my darling. That night, as Midas ate his dinner, he licked his lips. Never have I tasted such wonderful food. When he folded his napkin, he smiled at Marigold and he said, Ah, oh, this linen is so beautiful. He took her hands in his. And you, you, my child, you are more precious than gold. Will you walk in the woods with me tonight, father? She asked. Yes, yes, of course. Nothing would please me more, my dearest girl. That evening, King Midas walked into the woods hand in hand with his precious child. And he found more happiness there than he had ever known. From that day forward, Midas understood what real treasures were. So, what do you think now? Why didn't Midas simply ask for a big bag of gold? Why did he ask that everything he touched turned to gold? Yes, I think it's got something to do with the fact that he was being very, very greedy. Asking that everything he touched turned to gold meant that he would have a never-ending supply of gold, an infinite amount, rather than just one or two bags, right? Well, this is such a famous story, such a famous myth, that we even use the phrase the Midas touch or the golden touch in our conversations. For example, if you say of someone, oh, he has the Midas touch, you mean 
that he has a lot of good fortune in his life because everything he touches seems to bring him luck. Well, what do you think the story souvenir is? What's the truth that will linger with you in your heart? Maybe it's something like, be careful what you wish for, or remember to cherish what is most precious to you right here every day. Our family, that's always much more precious than gold. Happy Father's Day. Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey with Story.